Hey guys, welcome back to Adenit Roundtable, the virtual sessions. It's the weekend, it's Saturday, or as it is, we're recording, it is at the moment. You you guys are probably going to see this on Monday, um, which makes the topic of today's, uh, today's roundtable quite apt, which is all about working from home. Um, it's something we're all facing at the moment. Everyone's at home, everyone's figuring out how to collaborate and work together and be productive. And um, we're exactly the same, as, as we say in every episode. That's why you can see us sat in front of our living rooms and um, um, home offices and whatever, um, you know, just to keep working. And we're using technology to keep doing that. So today, really, we just wanted to do like a, a quick video, just talk about some of the top tools that are out there, some top tips for working from home um, and how you can be more productive. Um, I'm Willis, as always. I've got Jamie Del Grosso, Rob Lewis, our partners at Adenic Group. Hi, guys. Hi. Hi, Hi Wayne. Um, and uh, we're, we're doing all right, really, aren't we, fellas? You know, we, we've managed to um, keep working quite productively, to be honest, in, since we've uh, since this horrible lockdown. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. We, we're kind of used to it anyway. We've been using Microsoft Teams for a few months now anyway, haven't we? So um kind of fits in, doesn't it? Yeah, I'll say, like, I mean, with... Um with what we tend to do, we, we do have times where we work remotely anyway. Um, and I think we're quite fortunate in the sense that we took that step kind of from an early stage to get this infrastructure in place where we did have access to, you know, the, the tools we needed and the files and things we needed uh, wherever we was. Um, so I guess it's, you know, a, a change of environment, but um, obviously we kind of had that, that infrastructure in, the, uh, in place from the start. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, really, what we wanted to highlight today is that there's stuff out there. There is software and technology out there. Most of it and most of the stuff we're going to talk about today is free and accessible. Um, we thought we'd just highlight some. Some of them you're probably already using or already going to be aware of. So if it is, then great. Um, but if you're not, it might just give you a few tips um, just to help you along and help you plan your week a little bit. Um, we've tried to uh, raise kind of categories that we feel is probably going to be most relevant to certainly things that we're experiencing. And I'm sure other businesses are experiencing as well so the first one on that is uh communication so the most important part how do we keep in touch with um our colleagues and our teams and um, some really cool free stuff out there right yeah definitely i mean obviously right now we're using microsoft teams um we have other uh, teams who work with that use slack um i think obviously uh, those two right now are, are the ones that people tend to know most corporations will, will be on office 365 um which uh, if you are you do have an Office 365 package that gives you instant free access to Teams, uh, which is something that maybe not everybody realizes, but it's a very, very powerful tool that comes for free with it, for anyone that has that package. So definitely worth looking at. Anyone else, you know, Slack is well adopted around the world by technology companies, by, well, every type of company. Um, so, you know, a nice easy one to get into and, and start using. Yeah, yeah, I think one, one thing I think is really interesting about this is some of the social media platforms like um, Snapchat, WhatsApp, you can effectively do calls and meetings through that. And, you know, I know my children have been doing that for, for years now. They're constantly on the phone um, talking to each other on FaceTime or house party or whatever. Um, so what I think is a really interesting future is our kids, West, we, you know, I'm saying people my age is this is kind of new, you know, the, this level of technology is relatively new in my career or very new in my career. But for, my, for our kids who enter the full workforce, they will see absolutely nothing. This is um, business as usual for them. So, you know, the kids coming in and the young kids now are going to be using this stuff. They're already using it. And it feels yeah. kind of natural anyway for them already. Yeah, yeah. I mean, really adopting what's already going on in your personal lives, isn't it, really? I mean, uh, I'm seeing loads of stuff on Facebook at the moment. A lot of my friends on Facebook are hosting um, like live events or live watch events and stuff like that, which is the facility there that's on your Facebook profile. You can use it. There's absolutely no reason for you not to do that with some of your colleagues um, and use it in a, in a work capacity. As you say, Rob, WhatsApp and things, everyone's probably using that. And, and it, you can use that as, as a, a group chatting tool. Um, FaceTime um all you apple users out there i mean you know that that stuff is all there and at your disposal um so sometimes you don't really need to be looking for those specific enterprise software solutions you know probably the stuff you've got on your phone is just a great start to start um you know um having group meetings in the morning if you're having a group huddle or whatever and planning out your week use any one of those technologies i mean they're absolutely fine um I think where you can use FaceTimes as well, guys, you probably agree that um, wherever you can be face to face and you can see each other, that's probably a, a, an enhancement over um, maybe just having an email chat or a, or a phone call or whatever. There's something about being able to talk to each other and engage, isn't there, in this isolation? Yeah. It also holds people to account in the sense of, you know, we've all been at work called teleconferences with 50 people on teleconference and half the people are on the mute, half the people are probably making a cup of tea. 
certainly 80% of people are doing their emails. At least when you can see people's faces, it's very hard to be doing something else as well. So just think from an etiquette point of view and a productivity point of view, that's very important. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, um, another tool that I actually came across today, I think is definitely worth mentioning uh, in a situation like this. So a lot of the communication tools that we've mentioned um, have uh, live video chats and things, which is great for meetings and, and having conversations with people. Uh, but there's a, a tool that I came across called Sneak, which is S-N-E-E-K. Uh, and basically, this is what they describe it as a real-time presence software. So basically, it takes um, your webcam and it'll take a, a live picture every five minutes. And then it essentially creates like a wall of all your employees that are also working from home. And you kind of constantly see that, you know, it's, it's kind of a a way to make sure that you see that everybody's there it's kind of it brings everyone in together into the same space um and then integrates with things like slack or skype so that you can then call them when you want to have that conversation but um you know i think for a lot of people working from home one thing that they may miss especially if you work in an environment with a lot of people and you have a lot of friends in your workplace is that thing of you know of, of being isolated of being on your own and not seeing those people um so i think for a lot of people being able to see you know the colleagues working even if they're not having a conversation with them maybe something that you know helps them in that environment yeah it's that it's feeling that connection isn't it i mean that's the thing the one thing working at home, uh, from home is isolation isn't it and um i guess the point of this is you don't need to be isolated there are tools out there you haven't really got to spend any money most of it's free google is your friend guys you know so i mean worst case scenario google it and you'll find best best collaboration tools best free collaboration tools and it'll give you the top 10 that are available just try them you've got the time now's the time to experiment and try some new stuff so um you know why not um moving on from that then um so working from home the big thing is um it's a different environment so structure planning organization we, we take this for granted obviously when we go into work because the work environment is naturally set up in a way for us to be productive and 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 um a way you know we know what we're doing every day because that's kind of what the culture is and how it's laid out when you're kind of left to your own devices it's a little bit harder isn't it so um what can we look at for that in terms of uh, project management you know to-do lists that kind of stuff jamie you had some ideas on that yeah so um we you know we work with various different teams and and outside of what we do with the denic office i work with a lot of uh, creatives and they have their own kind of setups um one tool that i've always found is great for managing multiple teams, multiple scenarios. You know, each team might have a different workflow. Each team might have different people that are responsible for different things. Uh, so uh, for all those teams, I've tended to stick with Asana, which has been uh, a fantastic tool throughout the years that I've used. It's free for up to, I think it's two to 500 people or something like that. It's, it's a very uh, generous freemium package that you can get. Um, and that kind of helps you with organizing all your tasks and um, commenting communication sharing files and just kind of keeping that workflow in one place that everyone can access yeah yeah uh, we've been using asana for a long time haven't we and um yeah. uh, it, it's yeah you're right it's just a great way to um um organize things keep track of things be able to send uh, things back and forth so that you can get feedback and all that kind of stuff so if you're not already using something like that um have a look at it again as jamie says it's it's a free model um they do do a premium version but you know to be honest for what you get for the premium pay uh, the payment you make for the premium version um you might as well just have the free version to be honest unless you're really getting into the deep kind of mm -hmm. analytics of it you know um so that's a really good one to look at a few other things we've got listed on here wonderlist uh, was one that came up um and uh, microsoft to do's you know a very much a, a bit of a shopping list of things to do yeah, I mean, one thing that when I work with various teams and I know that I have different tasks that I need to do for different teams or for different projects, um, although those tools are great for being able to see that as like an overview, uh, I quite like to have just a simple list that is for me uh, that maybe also includes more ad hoc um, and personal things that I need to do as well and just kind of have that somewhere clear that I can see on my screen. Uh, so I, I'm currently using the Microsoft to do's app, which is the built in app on most Microsoft computers that works great, but there is a huge amount of other options out there. Wonderlist and, uh, I think it's one called don't forget the milk and things like that. There's, there's a huge amount of, of tools and most of these are free as well. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think there's a little more kind of like, um, aesthetic things of planning and organizing and that's finding somewhere to work where you're not going to be disturbed, where you feel you can sit all day. 
you know, maybe we'll just look out the window, that kind of stuff, and you know, get make sure you've got some headphones that work. Like, you know, make sure that you look okay on your webcam. Maybe I'm mm-hmm. not the best example of that on this particular uh, example, <laughs> but you know, all, all of those kind of like silly things that you don't necessarily think of. It just prevents you running around like an idiot looking for things before you have a call or something. So just have it all close to hand and you know, make sure your kids know not to disturb you and all that kind of good stuff. Yeah, definitely. And I think, um, I mean, obviously we're talking about a lot of technology. So we're talking about, you know, um, project management tools and, and list tools and things. Uh, but depending on how you work and um, me and uh, Wills, we made this point just before we came on. Uh, everybody's different. Everyone has their own kind of way of working that is sort of optimal for them. If you're someone that actually just likes to get pen and paper and write down what it is that you're doing for that day, um, you know, I know people, that, well, I mean, we've worked with people in the past where we'll have all these tools and they'll use it to see the jobs for the day and then they'll get out a personal planner and they'll write it down and then that's what they'll use throughout the day and that works better for them. Um, so I don't think there's like a one size fits all. It is a case of, you know, figuring out how you work, what works best for you, keeps you uh, motivated, keeps your concentration uh, and there is no like wrong way to do it, really. Yeah, I mean we've we, we've some a little bit skipped ahead in points, but actually those two then last two work together. So concentration essentially was was is the big thing. You know, it's hard to concentrate. It's hard to work from home. Um, it, it's a comfortable environment that you're used to relaxing in and watching your TV and hanging with the kids or whatever. So you see, Rob's got guitars behind him there. You know, that's that's I'm, his. I never touch them when I'm working. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes Rob does Skype calls with his guitar. I'm going to release that. And, and nobody's supposed to know that. It's never in shot, but you can always need, hear just the twinkling. I need of the screens. practice to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's it's a comfortable environment to be working from home, um, and so it's hard to change to go into that kind of structured work mode. Um, and just going back on the last couple of comments, uh, last couple of tips we've said there. So the organization structure planning. OK, when you're getting up in the morning, you're saying, OK, what am I doing today? It's Monday. What have I got to do for work? How am I working? So you need to be firstly looking at your lists. You need to be putting to, looking at your project management software, if that's what you're looking at. You need to be communicating with your team. Maybe you have a morning huddle, nine o'clock every morning. OK, what's everyone working on today? Whatever. Um, but then you need to make sure you go into an environment that you know that you can sit there and work without distraction. You know, mm-hmm. uh, many a time I've sat in front of the TV with my uh, laptop on my knee, continued work. And it's really hard work. Um and of course, as Jamie says, everything's different. Some people like to listen with uh, work with uh, music playing and having Spotify running all day. Some people like need to be in absolute silence. Mm. Um, some people feel that they need to track their time and and physically manage it. Okay, I'm going to spend an hour on this blog or whatever, and then I need to move on. So maybe you're one of them that needs to be like um, you know very very structured almost like a stop stop clock and there are tools out there things like toggle um is one that we've got listed um which is a great way to kind of literally it's like a stopwatch you know a start and stop okay how much time have i spent on this okay the next task how much time have i spent on this so uh yeah concentration and uh getting a good environment um maybe you set a space up in your uh, a desk somewhere or maybe something that replicates something similar to what you're working on in it when you go to work normally um, but definitely all considerations, all those will definitely make you more productive. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. I mean, on the note of uh, toggle as well. So um, time tracking is great for seeing the kind of work that you're doing. Um, but in terms of concentration as well, people have different uh, concentration uh, spans. And, you know, they, 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 some people struggle to have like sort of a, a long period of time sat working on a project. Um, so... One thing that when I've worked with people in the past that kind of have that issue where, you know, they kind of need to have things change and they like the dynamic atmosphere of, a, of, of an office um, is there's a thing called the Pomodoro technique, which is basically very short, fast moments of work followed by a break. Very similar to kind of the sprints that we, we do when we um, when we do our innovation workshops. But basically with the Pomodoro technique, the idea is that you'll, you do 15 minutes on a particular task so if you was designing something, be like, okay, I'm going to design this header of a website and just this, do that in 15 minutes. Then you have a five minute break. Then you go back and you do the next thing. Um, and for people that can kind of drift off, um, I find that that kind of helps them. So tools like Toggle, other than keeping track of what you've actually been working on through the day, can kind of help you break up that time as well and help you allocate time for different projects. Right. Yeah, yeah. I suppose it's kind of like in the same way of like working out or something. You know, if, you, if you're going for a run or if you're on a treadmill or whatever, you kind of go, right, I'm going to get to, you know, two kilometers and then I'm going to 
rest or, or I'm going to walk for a little bit, then I'm going to do another club, you know, and it's this kind of spare, you, then you feel like you're aiming for something and you get into that point and then you've kind of earned the down point. So, I mean, uh, yeah, techniques like that. I mean, again, everybody's different, aren't they? And, you know, some people just like to power through all day long and some people like, need, you know, need that kind of, um, I guess it's an incentive, you know, to, to complete a certain amount of tasks. Yeah, definitely. I mean, like I say, everyone's different. I mean, for me, I, I like to just, keep going once i've started with something and that's why i like you know headphones in forget everybody else exists just you know power through uh but you know for some people that's just that's just not the way that they work you know so um i think a lot of it is almost especially if you've not worked from home or worked remotely before it's a little bit of try uh trial and error sort of figure out what works for you and try different things you know does music help you concentrate or is it a distraction does you know short breaks every now and then keep you focused or does it you know make it harder for you to keep your concentration going yeah uh, rob how does it work for you i mean uh, obviously a lot of people watching this have got families at home so and and that's that's probably the big the big topic isn't it like when you're at home with your kids and they're not going to school and all that kind of stuff um i suppose creating that divide between being work mode and being dad i suppose it's quite difficult on a on a, on a normal yeah. day yeah, it's really hard because obviously, well, particularly in the current situation that we're in, the kids get really wound up during the day and start scrapping with each other. Obviously, not not very conducive to work atmosphere. But um, I mean, become a referee. Can, yeah, exactly. I mean, my kids are a little bit older now, so they're quite happily sitting in front of their Xbox or on Netflix all day. Not that we're not that we're encouraging that, but um, obviously, when they're younger, it's it's, it's much more difficult because they don't understand and they all just want to come and see you, that kind of stuff. But you know, one thing I think about this time of year, you know, it's often very nice in the morning. You can actually get up like five o'clock and you can have done three or four hours work before they're even up, which, you know, I'm not saying I've done that yet, but by the way. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but, you know, when, when you get to really nice light mornings, I often find that's a really good way to work, you know, get, yeah. get stuff done before anybody else is up and about. Yeah, or uh, 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 working later. You yeah, know. exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, so changing the workflow. But of course, there's, there's a discipline as well, isn't there? And going back to this working from home, it's really easy to like crack open that bottle of beer at five o'clock, or wasn't it? <laughs> isn't it? You know, because cause you hear. That's why and, I get up early in the morning <laughs> and <stuff. laughs> <laughs> but but this is the thing isn't it and and you know the weather's nice at the moment and there's little things like that you think oh should we go outside and should we just like stick a barbie on or whatever yeah. um so there is the, there's going to have to be a discipline now the, the suggestion is not not that you don't do that stuff certainly do that but then obviously you need to think how that affects your work time so as rob says you might be getting up first thing in the morning and doing a few hours before the kids get out of bed you might maybe do it later on when everybody's calmed down and they're all watching a movie or whatever maybe that's your time to lock in but again you can work around it you've just got to look at uh, your day as kind of segments really and work out what is the most the best yeah, fit. i don't i think it's a little bit like exercise i mean Generally speaking, most people like to exercise either when they go up before they do anything else or at the end of the day as a kind of an unwinding thing. And you can almost look at work in that kind of same way. I mean, you know, obviously most modern work forces, you don't work from now until five. You know, you know even, in the, even in the most strict corporations, they're working all the time and they're fitting things around their lives. And obviously when you're working at home in this kind of scenario, then that's even more um, flexible. Um, so just do it when it suits you. I mean, you're much better off. Um, doing it when you feel productive and sitting in front of your computer for eight hours and doing nothing because you know sometimes you just can't work you know other things are happening and you just can't you know get into the groove of it I, certainly certainly that's true for me yeah. yeah i think actually you you could see this uh, as an opportunity to find kind of that best kind of uh, work time and environment for you with what's going on so uh, you know i know that i work better slightly later on and in the evenings i feel like a little bit more comfortable working then a lot of people prefer to get up work in the morning and have more freedom sort of later on in the evening um and you know while everyone's at home you know you have that opportunity to do that you're not kind of really affecting anybody else's workflow or anything like that so um i think this could also be an opportunity for people to figure out what works best for them in the long run as well yeah, yeah. And, and you're doing it all the time anyway i mean if, if, if you're a working parent particularly if you've got young kids you're always doing things like, you know, working stuff around the school run or, um, you know, how, how do I tie this in with taking the kids to activities or having tea cups or, you know, the daily life that you're living. So you kind of are, you, you're already doing this, really. It's just now you're forced into a like a, a, a very particular scenario where you're having to also weave in the, the actual work you rather than go away and do it and come back. Um, so, again, a little bit of structure, a bit of planning. If you go back to our earlier point about structure and planning, there are tools out there. Even if you have to mix up the work and the personal stuff in that list that you're making or in that project management 
um, software that you're using. Um, we mentioned Asana, but I mean, there's loads available. Again, you know, Google it. You know, um, Jamie, what, what's off the top of your head? Like one or two um, project management tools. I mean, I would say that most people um, would be looking at things like Asana. Trello is still very popular. Trello, that's one, yeah. Um, Again, if you are a company that's using Office 365, there is Microsoft Planner, which is, again, is a free tool by Microsoft for people with the 365 account that most people, again, don't know about. Um, so, I mean, there's all these amazing free tools. And if you really want to, if you want some extra features, is a huge amount of very, very powerful paid tools as well. So, um, you know, the, there is no end of these things. If you, like I say, if you Google it, you can just go through pages and pages and pages. You'll never run out of new stuff to find. Yeah, yeah. Um, the other thing to be doing is to, to be spending time discovering new stuff as well. Um, we, we've touched upon this in one of the earlier earlier casts where we were talking about learning and using the time to upskill. Obviously, the um, because you're in a different environment and you're having to collaborate differently, it might be an opportunity for you to be able to take on some of those tasks or learn some of those tasks that usually you would have people in there doing on your behalf. Um, so I'm talking really basic stuff here, but it, maybe you're designing a bit of content, um, you know, you, you're not sort of savvy with using the Adobe suite or whatever, but like there's things out there like Canva, which is like a really basic free um, design tool to design like little social media posts and banners and all that kind of stuff. Um, it, maybe you want to get into a little bit of the copywriting for your website, do a bit or do a bit of blogging. Tumblr, a, a free tool to do blogging to document what you're doing. Um, maybe you want to get into podcasting, perhaps creating something like that, recording your activity. Um, there's free tools like Anchor. Um, you know, so there's loads of stuff out there where you can be like um, utilizing free stuff out there to actually get better, at, um, not only get better at what you're doing, but actually contribute to what somebody else might usually do on your behalf. You've got yeah. some others there. Yeah. And uh, one thing I think that's worth mentioning as well is we're discussing people creating content and doing things to sort of upskill themselves and, and sort of fill that time. Uh but with the situation we're in now, there'll be a higher demand for content than they would at any other time. Um, so actually now is a great time to be looking at, um, you know, what you can be putting out and uh, what you could be learning because those skills are probably going to be more in demand for the, you know, the next few weeks, months, whatever, um, because of this situation. Yeah, there's uh, there's loads of stuff as well. It's very, I mean, again, going back to that point, YouTube, there's just so much stuff on there that you can be learning. Anything you want to know, you can pretty much YouTube it and there'll be an instructional video in there. Um, if you want to pay a little bit of money, if you have a LinkedIn account, most of you probably got LinkedIn accounts. There's LinkedIn Learning. I can't remember what it costs. It's about 20 quid a month or something like that. And But I think you get a premium LinkedIn thing with it as well. But I mean, that's filled with like thousands and thousands and thousands of videos on every single topic you can imagine, full courses. Um, maybe like you can weave that into your structure for the day and your to-do list, spend an hour just studying Photoshop or film editing or whatever it might be. Um, iMovie, you know, the, the Apple users out there, if you want to make like little vlogs like this or whatever, you know, the, the tools are there. I mean, going back, if, if you're on a 365, um, a 365 system, then, you know, the ecosystem that comes with that pretty much provides every tool you can imagine. If you're on a, like an Apple system, the ecosystem that comes with that pretty much provides every tool you can imagine. And for those that are jumping in between, some of the stuff we're listing for you today are just great, um, great tools to access independently and often integrate with each other as well. So, I mean, you, you can almost create your own custom ecosystem of, um, of, of working tools. Um, mm. Any other uh, specific ones on there for um, upskilling? Any cool bits yeah, of software? Yeah, well, uh, maybe not so much an upskilling, but like you said about the ecosystems, I think one thing worth mentioning is we are mentioning uh, the Microsoft package a lot, but that's because that's what we are we're currently operating within. We use the Microsoft ecosystem for our company. Um, but for anyone that's out there that's using any other ecosystem that's bought into the Google suite, that's bought into Zoho, that's bought into one.com or whatever else is out there, I mean, there's, there's loads of them. Pretty much all of those platforms offer all these things. They all have their own versions of it. They all have, you know, project management tools, CRMs, um, you know, document sharing tools, everything. So, it you know, th we are mentioning these tools now, but, you know, a little bit of research into the platforms that you already use, you'll probably find that there is a huge ecosystem around that platform uh, yeah. that helps you with all these things. Yeah. Uh, collaboration as well. Uh, I, I mean, we, we've touched upon some of this already, but... Um, Okay, so Google, 
um, Google Drive. It comes with 15 gig of free um, uh, free storage for you. You have Google Docs, Google Sheets, which are essentially Word documents and Excel documents um, that you can work on together at the same time. Google Slides, which is essentially PowerPoints online that you can work on the same. So you can be like designing, sharing ideas, designing presentations, looking at spreadsheets, whatever it is that you do in your day-to-day -day role in a shared in capacity. So you haven't got to be like saving documents, attaching it to an email, sending it to Mary, Mary edits it, saves it, sends it back, all that kind of stuff. You can, there's a much smoother way of doing that. Um, if you're into Microsoft, then uh, OneDrive is exactly the same thing. Shared documents, shared storage. Um, maybe your company has it, its own server um, that you can all be that you can all be pulling off and sending back and forth. Your IT guys can certainly set that up for a collaboration um, while you're working from home. Um, so you know the. In terms of communication and collaboration, um, these tools all work as one, really. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I think it, this is kind of where the split starts to show itself, depending on what kind of work situation you have. So if you are employed by a, lar a large corporate company, for example, um, you know, the chances are you have some sort of NAS system, like a server set up somewhere, uh, and you can all access files through that. If you are a freelancer, a, a creative, a consultant, you know, self-employed, um, then you're probably going to have a slightly different setup and that's kind of more on you to make sure that you are, you know, creating these kind of systems that you can use and share that work with the people that you're working with. Um, but again, in most cases, these are completely free and completely accessible um, to people working from home. So, you know, I th again, research, finding what works best for you, finding out what works best with the ecosystem you've already got. Yeah, yeah. Um, and finally, just on, on our list here of um, things to consider, working from home, um, looking after yourself. Um, mm. You know, we're talking about the actual tools and stuff to actually deliver your work and communicate and collaborate and work remotely and all that stuff. And we've listed some. And by the way, we'll try and post links in, in the comments for some of the tools that we've said so you can see what they look like and try them out and all that stuff. Um, but yeah, in terms of looking after yourself, in terms of physically, mentally, looking after your general health, and making sure that you're taking the time in your day to, you know, don't feel guilty about taking your time in the day to maybe spend that half an hour, an hour with the kids or FaceTime your parents or your family or whatever and, and take that time out because, you know, um, these are unique circumstances for us all. Um, and um, it's not all about work. It's all about this is an opportunity to really adapt our lifestyles. Um some of the cool stuff, I mean, most of this guys watching probably have heard of Headspace. If you haven't used that before, great app for um, basic kind of meditation, you know, breathing exercises. If, if you're watching this and you think that just sounds like beyond my world, try it. It's actually really good. Um, and it's just a really good way just to kind of slow yourself down and refocus. Um, Rob's favorite, Strava, you know, get yourself out hey. there for a bike ride. Rob, you're doing you're doing your runs and bikes every yeah. day probably, aren't you? Yeah, I am. I'm keeping my exercise going because obviously I'm a little bit obsessed with all that, as you know, uh, at least uh, from a Strava point of view. I, I, like from a, from a serious point of view, like working from home, that really screws my exercise up for me because I tend to put my exercise around traveling to work. So I'll cycle to work or I'll go in early and go for a run. But when you're working at home, you have to do that in a different way, particularly in the current circumstances for us in the UK and lockdown. But obviously it's a very important element of productivity and mental health as well as physical health. So yeah. Try and work out how you can get your exercise in because today I've left the house and I'm probably in about a thousand steps, which is not good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's this whole gamifying, isn't it? Again, it's, it's utilizing those tools and saying, well, again, working it into your, your daily routine. It's all about routine. Okay, between one and two, I'm going for my run or my walk or I'm going to do my Pilates or whatever it is that you do. Um, and, and work that into work that into your day. The, the stuff that you've already got on your phone and stuff like that, Google Fit, even if you haven't got any of the new stuff, Google Fit or anything on your phone will, will work. Um, for those of you that fancy yeah. trying it, this uh, you know, uh, Joe Wicks, the chef exercise guy, he does um, – is that what he is, a chef exercise guy? He, he, does, a, he does a YouTube video does, every morning. Yeah. What's that? <laughs> he, does, he does food as well, yeah. He, does, um, he, he's, he makes salty food as well. You'll love it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, he does a thing at nine o'clock every morning, which is basically a, a PE teacher, an exercise thing for kids. But actually, I've been doing it most mornings. I'm, I'm happy to admit. 
as the adult and it's absolutely shattering but it's a great <laughs> thing to get you going at nine o'clock um if you fancy doing half an hour of running on the spot and jumping jacks and whatnot then um it's it's good to get your heart pumping <laughs> but this is uh <laughs> it's free stuff though it's free there and it's out there to make people feel good about themselves and really you need to do that and finally socializing um we can't leave our house. We know we can't leave our houses, but we can communicate. The technology is here. We're speaking to you now through video. It, you're doing it every day. Use it. Take the time out. You know, connect with some of the people you haven't connected with for a long time as well. I, I've started like trying to connect with old friends, people that, you know, when you say, oh, I could be, I've been meaning to get around to that and I've been meaning to do it. Well, no, you can. You've got the time to do it. So, again, work it into your structure every day. Um, but hopefully that's giving you some 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 tips and some tools that you can be looking at for working from home um we're all in the same boat and we're all trying to do the same thing but communication uh we've mentioned some tools organization structure planning project management we've mentioned some stuff how to collaborate google microsoft um concentration um use it you know setting up your environment your work environment um and you having tools like music or whatever whatever makes it work for you um upskilling learning trying out new stuff um, and looking after yourself, physical and uh, mental health. Um, these are all things to consider. As I say, we'll post some links and uh, hopefully that'll be helpful to you. Um, and then uh, we'll come back to you in the next few days with some new stuff, some new tips, some new videos. And uh, in the meantime, hope you're having a good time. Hope you're staying home. Hope you're staying well. And uh, we'll see you for the next video. Okay, boys. Cheers, guys. See you. Thank bye. you. Bye. bye.